So just now we saw about how the brain works. See, this is uh, may not be a part of your uh, curriculum, or so, but it is essential for everybody to know about our uh, most complex system. So you are working on a system of your computer. This is uh, 100 billion more of your uh, space, whatever your uh, your MB or whatever it is, your RAM space, whatever it occupies. That is only a minuscule. Your system is only minuscule. Whereas your 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 mobile system of your mobile your brain is something which can do do something which you cannot imagine. See, but this brain has got certain limitations. Limitations to it because the mind and the brain they are they are together as such because mind is the reflection of what the functions of a brain. Whatever the command you give and whatever the command you give to the brain, it translates into brain. The same thing it is vice versa. You can you can repattern your thinking on your brain through your mind. That is what we will come back to it more elaborately in that. First of all, let us see. See, we are going to talk about what leadership is because you are, you guys are now uh, finished your uh, global MBA course. Now we are in the threshold of uh, taking a new assignment. And all you guys need not be a manager. You have to be a leader. Leader is what? Is something who, who does and he doesn't command. Manager says you do the work. Manager says you do the work. Whereas leader does the work. He says he goes out and do the work as far as managers are concerned. So as far as leaders are concerned. So all you guys have to be a leader. You have to lead. For that leadership what you need is now that we have seen the activity of our brain, how this emotion is going to uh, uh, impel you, impel your progress. See, all these things hamper your progress in one way or other. Because if you don't address your emotions, once you are able to address your emotions, you will be able to wait through difficult times as far as your official course are concerned. That, that, that is what is very important we are looking at. See, Aristotle, what he said, anyone can get angry. It is not that... That's not easy, but to be angry to the right person at the right time, the right degree, and the right person at the right way, it's very difficult. See, I can give you one illustration as such. Your father, your father called, uh, his son was so terrified, he was so annoyed with his father. He said, Dad, I'm not able to get through this anger. Always I get tensed up. I'm so angry at this. I don't know what to do. His father role play, what uh, Dad said, okay, I will do one thing, I'll give you a box of nail. You just go mark yourself in the fence. Whenever you get angry, just mark on the fence. Whenever you just go hit that nail in the fence. So this guy went and hit the nail in the fence. One day he used to hit 37 nails in the fence. So what happened? His father, uh, his dad said, oh my god, 37. But slowly that got reduced to 5, 4, and to a certain extent, it came to nullity. And that time, his uh, son came and told his dad, dad, now that I have conquered anger, now see how I am. So dad said, you go remove all the uh, remove all the nails. So he removed all the nails, one after one after one after one after. There was totally around 37 and more than that, nails in that. So dad told his uh, son, see, whatever in anger, Whatever you have done, that has created a hole. That mark cannot go. That mark will always remain. So you have to first do is to can con conquer the emotion of anger. Because yeah, there is a sub separate subject as such for anger management that can also be discussed in length. But this is the, I, I want to start off with a major emotion which is, which is really what you call one of, which is nagging these younger uh, generations as such. Because they are, they live in a separate, uh, what you call, perceptions. And they are not able to get, uh, get to the, what you call, the crux of the situation. They get furiated for nothing. And this is what is the basic of the emotions which we are talking of. See, there are four. Why we are talking of this, the main, main uh, emotions is you becoming mad, you becoming sad, glad and scared. See, 
mad because something is unfair. Can you see something unfair is injustice to you encountered? Am I right? I want you to participate. See, am I right? Yes. This is okay. See, when you get mad at somebody, and you say, "See, something injustice, boss. It's not that I want. No, no, no. It should be the other way around." So you get mad at, mad of that. They over it is. Then is you are sad because of loss. Loss of what? Loss of money. So here in Singapore also, I met couple of people. They are talking to me saying that, "Boss, catch you know. Do you find can can you find a solution for us?" Two people came and said. Boss, we have you have a problem of drinking in uh, in Chennai. As far as Chennai is concerned, drinking is a big hassle out there because every side, third person drink. Here, every two person gambles. So, so they that is the problem. So they, they lose money. They are sad. Then you are glad. Why you are glad? See, because all you guys are now going uh, finish your MBA. You are going to get placed, and you want whatever you whatever you uh, sought for. That you are going to get, so you are glad. So that makes you happy. The last, but the one is fear. That is the one which is causing lot of because your fear, fear causes worry. That causes anxiety. That causes stress. The fear is the major emotion which originates from your brain because you are insecure. You feel that you are insecure. That is not the case. I will come back to you to say that you need not fear for anything in life. you will come back to that fear because you anticipate something bad something is bad is going to happen something is not going to come in terms with you you are not going to get all those things never mind you will be placed or you will be it will happen whatever is whatever you aspire for whatever you took this assignment or whichever it is it will surely happen then worry is caused by why worry Worry is caused by the own. Is their own imagination leads to stress and anxiety. Worry is what it's a thought process. Always you keep on nagging, think about that perennially. Oh, that is going to happen. This is going to happen. It's a thought process. Worrying is a thought process. Worry comes with repetitive thoughts, and whereas anxiety is a feeling. Where it actually, you see, normally when there is a lot of pressure coming in, when there is some loss, you have a problem here and here. Am I right? Yes. In your throat, then your stomach. These are the belly, the lower abdomen. That are the two areas you always have a gush of blood. That is adrenal gush, which comes and disturbs you at such. That time you are stressed. Worrying is uh, see anxiety is felt in chest and in throat. Even in throat, chest, and abdomen are the three areas. And worrying happens in think and part of the brain. Whereas anxiety is the result of emotional brain. See what happens is, see when there is an emotional blockade or emotional upheaval, your brain is activating too much because all signals, all these things goes to the hypothalamus, which you saw in the picture. The hypothalamus sends it, it sends it to the uh, emotional part of the brain. That's called the frontal frontal brain. So it goes into the amygdala. Amygdala is the one which occupies the anger portion of. Once the event set is occupying the anger portion of it, there is no other information passed on to the any parts of the brain. So the other for uh, uh, frontal cortical, parietal lobe, your optical lobe, anything, nothing is working. So you are so stressed, and anger is a pattern. Don't practice anger. Once you practice anger, you cannot come back. See, once it is okay, but never make that as an habit. What happens? You go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth.